Hello everyone. In this video, we'll be exploring how to create a void in a Tapa Solid in Revit, which can be extremely useful in site and landscape modeling. Voids allow us to subtract material from the Tapa Solid, making space for various features like water bodies, basements, or custom landscape forms. We'll walk through the process of creating both regular shaped water ponds or pools ideal for architectural or planned designs, and irregular-shaped ponds, which are often used to simulate more natural environments in landscaping and urban planning. Whether you're working on a residential landscape or a large-scale site model, this technique will help you enhance realism and design accuracy. So let's get started. First, we're going to create a regular-shaped water pool. To start, go to the Massing in Site tab and click on it. Then select In Place Mass. A pop-up may appear because the Show Mass setting isn't enabled in the view. Just click Close to continue. You'll then be prompted to name the mass. I named it Pool and clicked OK. Once you confirm, you'll be taken to the Modify In Place Mass environment where you can draw the shape of the pool. I select the Rectangle tool and draw the desired shape. After drawing the shape, go to Create Form, but make sure to select Void Form since we are subtracting from the top of solid. Next, you'll need to define the depth of the void. You can either enter a value directly or adjust it in a section view. In the section view, select the bottom line of the void shape to access the control handles and set the depth accordingly. For reference, the top of solid I'm working with has a thickness of 1600 millimeters so I chose a shallower depth for the pool to ensure it doesn't cut all the way through. Once the depth is set, it's time to cut the top of solid. Go to the Cut tool and remember, first, select the top of solid, then select the void form. This will apply the cut properly. After that, click Finish Mass, and as you can see, a rectangular void has now been cut into the top of solid creating the base for your water pool. Next, I'm going to create a circular cut following the same steps used for the rectangular one. This time, I name the mass Pool 2 and click OK. In the In Place Mass environment, I select the Circle tool and draw a circular shape where I want the new pool to be. Just like before, I go to Create Form and choose Void Form to subtract the shape from the top of solid. To define the depth, I switch to a section view and adjust the depth by selecting the bottom edge of the void. This allows me to match the desired depth for the pool without cutting through the entire top of solid. Once the depth is set, I go to the Cut tool. First selecting the top of solid, then the circular void. Finally, I click Finish Mass, and as you can see, a circular void has been successfully created in the top of solid. Now it's time to create the water inside the pool. First, I go to the Architecture tab and select Component. You can create water using either a component or a top of solid. In this part of the video, I'll demonstrate how to create it using a component. Later, I'll show how to do it using a top of solid. From the component options, choose Model in Place. When prompted to select a family category, choose Generic Models. You'll be asked to name the model. I named it Water and Pool 1. Then click OK. Next, select Extrusion and switch to Level 1 to begin sketching. Since we need to define the shape to extrude, I use the Pick Lines tool to trace the edges of the rectangular and circular voids. Remember, if you're unable to select the lines, it might be due to the current working plane. To fix this, go to Set Work Plane and manually select the correct plane this will allow you to pick the edges properly. After selecting the lines for both shapes, click Finish Edit Mode to complete the sketch. 
The model will now appear, but it still needs the correct material. To apply the water material, select the model, go to its properties panel, and click on the material field. Search for water in the material browser, select it, and click OK. Now the model will appear as a water surface. However, you'll notice that the water may appear above ground level, which isn't realistic. To fix this, switch to a section view and adjust the position of the extrusion so it sits properly within the pool depth. Once everything looks good, click Finish Model. And now you have a realistic water pool in your design. For simplicity and to keep the video short, I haven't added concrete walls or a base slab to the pool. But if you'd like to include them, you can easily do so by using walls for the sides and a floor element for the bottom. Now, I'm going to create an irregular shaped pond. To begin, I select the topo solid and start adding points to define the shape. First, I add the top corner points to outline the pond area. After completing the top points, I set the elevation value to minus 1400 millimeters to define the depth of the pond. Then, I select the lower points and the irregular pond shape is created. Once done, I right click and cancel to exit the edit mode. Since the shape is irregular, I'll be creating the water using a top of solid as well. This allows the water to follow the exact shape of the pond for a more realistic look. To do this, I go to level 1 and select top of solid again. From the properties panel, I choose a material, but for now, I just draw a rectangular shape to represent the water surface. Once the shape is complete, I click finish edit mode. At this point, the model is created, but it doesn't yet have the water material applied. To assign the material, I go back to level 1, adjust the position of the section, and then open the section view. From there, I select the top of solid representing the water, switch back to 3D view, click on edit type, and assign water as the material. Next, I want to adjust the depth of the water to make it more realistic. I return to the section view and slightly lower the water surface so it sits below the surrounding ground level. Now you can see the water has been created inside the pond and its color matches the other pools in the project. However, if you look closely in the section view, you'll notice that the water is still in a rectangular shape which doesn't match the pond's irregular form. To fix this, I need to join the water top of solid with the pond top of solid. To do that, I go to the Modify tab and select the Join tool. Remember, first select the pond top of solid, then select the water top of solid. Once joined, right-click and choose Cancel to exit the command. Now if you select the water, you'll see that it has taken on the irregular shape of the pond, making it much more realistic. Finally, if I switch to the 3D view, you'll see that a beautiful, natural-looking pond has been created for your design. If you enjoyed this video and haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe to the channel for more tutorials like this. Thank you for watching.